Howdy, my name is Taylor and I'm so excited to keep exploring biology, aka life science, with you. What is the smallest piece of us that is still alive? Say it with me, cells. In this lesson, we're wondering what are cells made of? What's inside cells? In today's lesson, our goals are to understand what is the same in all cells. So we'll consider what's inside a cell or what cells are made of and how these cell parts work together as a complete system to do all the things a cell needs to do to keep life rolling. Previously, we explored all the experimental evidence that led scientists to discover cell theory. Years and years of evidence support the idea that cells are the basic units of life for all living things, and all cells come from already existing living cells. Understanding the cell would likely not have been possible without the invention of the microscope. All the microscopes we've discussed previously were light microscopes. Light microscopes, of course, use light and lenses to magnify something. Light, just like water, travels in waves. For something to be visible in light, it needs to be larger than a wave of light. Thankfully, a cell is larger than a wave of light. Unfortunately, most of the bits inside a cell are smaller than a wave of light, making them invisible under light microscopes. You're now looking at an electron microscope. Specifically, the first ever electron microscope that was capable of magnifying images greater than a light microscope could. Electron microscopes involve lots of complex physics and engineering, but the heart of electron microscopy is the use of a beam of electrons, as opposed to a beam of light, to magnify and see the very small. If your curiosity is piqued, Tuck into that PDF for an electron microscope simulation to play with and learn more about this incredible tool. Modern electron microscopes can magnify up to 10 million times, while some of the best light microscopes today can only magnify around 2,000 times. You can see the stark difference between light and electron microscopes in this pair of images. Incredibly, these are both images of the exact same bacterial cell. On the left, these bacterial cells under a light microscope just look like little purple dots. On the right, under the electron microscope, these bacterial cells in red are much, much larger and more defined. The electron microscopes of the 1930s and 1940s allowed biologists to begin to peer into the cells and see the bits and bobs that make up these cells. In future lessons, we'll unpack the different types of cells. For today, we're going to focus on the bits that all cells have in common, that we've been able to discover and view using electron microscopy and other experimental tools. The first bit, that is visible with some light microscopes and even more clearly seen under an electron microscope, is the plasma membrane. As you can see in this drawing, this defines the cell, but it's an actual, meaningful, necessary part of the cell. The plasma membrane is the gatekeeper to the cell, protecting it from invaders and allowing in necessary bits. For the cell to remain functional and intact, the plasma membrane is utterly essential. Within the cell, some sort of medium is required for everything else to exist in. This is called the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is a jelly-like fluid that allows everything else in the cell to exist and function. What gives each cell its identity is its DNA. DNA is the genetic material that codes for all the necessary components within the cell that must be built by the cell itself and allows the cell to create more cells. Finally, all cells have ribosomes that use the DNA to actually build all the necessary parts of those cells. To be clear, these four cell components can look different cell to cell. The plasma membrane can appear straight and rigid, or globular, like the one seen here. DNA can be compacted within a specific structure or just coiled up within the cytoplasm as it is in this bacterial cell model. The cytoplasm 
generally look similar across cells, but I wanted you to see an electron microscopy image of this jelly stuff within the cell. And ribosomes can freely float around in the cytoplasm, or they can be contained together within another structure, like in the animal cell here. As scientists were able to investigate and understand more about cells with electron microscopes and other tools, the central tenets of cell theory were expanded. We now understand that DNA, the genetic material that gives the cell its identity, is passed between cells during cell division, just like you can inherit something unique from your parents. As we've hinted at, there are different types of cells, but cells of the same organisms are mostly the same. For example, all humans have the same basic type of cells. Finally, as cells operate, including ribosomes building cell structures from DNA, energy flow occurs within those cells. Did we learn what we aim to learn? Pause this video and try to complete these sentence stems and answer this question in a notebook or your guided notes. All cells have a plasma membrane, DNA, a cytoplasm, and ribosomes. We know this because we've been able to see these structures with electron microscopes, and we've been able to experiment with these structures as well. A cell is kept safe, intact, and able to do its work through the protective barrier of the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane contains the cytoplasm, the jelly in which all the chemical reactions and processes of the cell happen. Within the cytoplasm, the ribosomes build everything the cell needs using the DNA. Woohoo! Now, go refine and test your understanding of these fundamental cell biology concepts with the practice questions. And, coming up, we're going to consider the question, what types of cells exist? Hey.